Welcome back to my bench. Today we have a piece of equipment that's used in radio stations for mostly for remote broadcasting uh, to do a remote out in the field. These things work great. They're a wonderful little device. They are not, um, well, super rugged. And by super rugged, I mean things stick out the sides that can be broken. <laughs> One of the major ones on these is this little thing right here. This is the uh, power connector. It plugs in right there. And it can get mashed pretty bad. If these things fall off on the floor, uh, these things can... The, this part's usually okay. It's the part that goes in here. And I've been told that that's what's wrong with this one, and we're going to see if we can fix it. This is the main unit. This is an extension for uh, five microphones and five headphones. You can adjust them left and right, panning the stereo. This is your input level. This is your return, and this is your local. The local is you talking. The return is what's coming back down the line to you for like taking cues or whatever. This is the your input level to get the right meter action over here that we'll see when we can turn this on. And the pan stereo left and right is just going from one side to the other. Most of these are mono. They have inputs on the back that are for mic or line. So you can plug a line level into there like oh you know plus 10 plus 4 or a microphone all these are set for mics and uh let's see this one over here this one's for program or headphones i forget exactly what that's for don't really remember but uh this one is and the fifth one over here is for mono only these are your headphone outputs um so that each person with the mic has their own headphones this is over here this is the main master input for mono and you can select line or uh, mic input with that one too it also has a stereo line in here where you can plug in an external source um like a tape recorder or something like that this is your line out so that you can run that to something else um, like a recorder or something if you want to record it. This is your headphone out. And this is mobile in out. I don't even remember what that's for. <laughs> uh, all of these little buttons here. This is your mono line in level. This is your local level. And this is your return level. And these little guys all push down so they get out of the way. And uh, they don't get broke off as easy. Uh... When you buy the unit originally, it comes with just this. And what you have is a big screw down here, which is evidently a smaller screw than I thought. And you take this off, or at least unscrew it. It's captured so it doesn't fall off and get in your way. And you can pull this guy out. There's a big old plug. Lots of connectors. This thing isn't scanned or anything. It's just individually. Each individual component has its own plug. And it goes into this big giant hole in the side. Um, normally there's a cover that goes over that. Uh, it can be battery operated from... One of these guys is one of the big batteries. This is uh, 7.4 volts, 48.8 watt hours, or 6,600 milliamp hours. And basically you put it in. It's kind of weird. You put it in and you slide it to the side and it locks in there. So, And the batteries last a good long time. Most of the time, though, we'll be you'll be running it off the power supply. Ew, we got to get this thing apart and find out because that is loose. I hope it's just not completely worn out in the inside there. Hmm. On this side, they've got your power goes in here. This is a serial connection. 
uh, for controlling it through a, through a external device. And these are contact closures for controlling other out, outside devices like, um, oh, if you wanted to control a satellite receiver or something to come on during specific times or something like that. It, um, I've never used one of those. This is a USB. I don't know. I don't know if that's active or not. I don't know. There's a couple of different versions of these. And this is the, the connector for the um, USB Wi-Fi connector that goes on here. Or maybe. This, this is a newer one. I've not, I've not had one of these. This, this one is uh, newer than the one I've got at work. I'm not sure if that is a Wi-Fi connector or if it actually goes for um, WAN, like for, uh, you know, like for your cell phones. Because a lot of these people will use these over cell phones. Oh, here's the little connector the thingy that goes over here. It's Comrex. All right, and it's got a strap so that you can hold it and not drop it on the ground, hopefully. All right, so let's... Nope. All of the screws are little ones, I guess. But let's take it apart. These... uh. These generally see pretty rough service. Um, if you're out in uh, in the field doing a remote and you get done as the bar is closing at 2 o'clock, it is not normal to want to stay around for an hour and be very careful with your equipment. I mean, these things kind of get thrown around. Mm, come on. Come on, one more. Okay. <laughs> they just pull apart. There we go. All right, and there's the insides of it. It's a fairly complicated little device. Uh, the top and bottom boards, this board... Uh, has all of the connections and stuff to do your all your contact closures and all that kind of stuff through. I think it's that one. Uh, oh, this one. This one has a little micro SD card slot in it. That's new. Um, this is uh, all the radio stuff over here uh, for in uh, volume controls and mixers and all that kind of stuff, plus some power supplies. Uh, I think that's what this one is down here. I don't know. I don't have the schematic on this right away. But our problem today is this over here. So we're going to take these guys loose so as not to rip them. Because, boy, I'll tell you, if you break one of these, you are in trouble. And these are dense. I mean, they're dense. You can see, can you see how many wires there are on there? That's a lot. Looks like four screws to take it apart. I'm just, I'm hoping that it's just busted, this connector. Um, because... Uh, I suppose I could get one. These are a current use item. Call call up Comrex and say, "Hey, I need one." I last time I worked on one of these was at my stations, and uh, nobody broke it. It just broke itself, <laughs> right? Um, but it uh, it it was it was severely busted. Uh, badly. Mine's not built like this. Mine's a little different. Mine's got a TFT card slot in it, or whatever you call those things, and it, um, the card sticks out about that far, uh, for your cell phone, 
and it got dropped sideways and jammed it up inside the thing and broke off the entire it wasn't pretty so what holds you on luck yep all right wonder what that little board's for got 13 meg crystal on it hmm all right well of course it would be under there let's get this out of our way wow they want to make sure that didn't fall out of there is that actually a metal in yeah a metal insert in there that's that's pretty heavy there we go get this thing out of the way and we'll take a look at this connector that's going to require the use of a of the microscope hang on let me get that thing okay finally got this to work um the microscope and we're gonna take a look at it here see what what we can see i'll plug the power cord into it and see if we can see any wiggling going on here uh, this well wow that is loosey goosey but I don't see I do not see any wiggling No, I don't. That's not a good sign. We're going to have to turn them on soldering weapons here. Let's get this out of the way, too. All right, well, that's not a good sign. Is that That's a strange plug. You look at it. It has five and a hole in the middle. And none over right there on that side. So we're going to have to get this thing out of here. Let's see if there's anything we can do about it. I don't have high hopes. But we'll find out. The soldering station is warming up. Hang on. Okay, well, I took the little plate off the side of it just so we could get to it here. Let's see. <clears throat> if we can get it out. some parts really close to these little service mount parts yeah. maybe not so much hold on
a little bit of wax on there and see if this will help. And probably a multi layer board. At least double. Well, I need to get glasses for this one. This is a little bit more finicky. And you might assume I'm just looking at it. I have a feeling that this thing is just worn out. And if that is the truth. About the only thing we can do is I think they need this thing tomorrow, like everything else in radio. Sorry about that. I got to put the microphone back on. I'll try to pump that up in post. All right, well, I think they need this thing tomorrow. So I'm going to put it back together and see how bad it is. And I'll order one of these things from the company. And um, fight with this thing later. Because I just, there's just not much I can do with it right now. I mean, that thing is just loose in there, just worn out. So, I don't know. Let's put it back together and see how bad it, it really is. I'm hoping it's... at least serviceable, although I have my doubts. Because if this thing if they can't use it at all I don't know. Yeah, life of an engineer, it's basically everything needs to be done. It needs to be done right now. And you're not allowed to have any parts. Not magnetic, of course. Why would you be? Stainless steel better, I guess. Kind of forgot I took this off. I was really hoping it was just busted solder joints in there, but. I can't be that lucky, I guess. That's not not smashing under anything. Well, at least I don't think I made anything worse. <laughs> I 
these, uh, wait a minute, there was a screw that went in there, wasn't there? Yeah. Of course, you're not magnetic either. Of course not. Come on. Mm. Okay. It worked. Well, the only thing I can do is if the holes, if the actual plug here is worn out, about the only real thing I can do is give it a little spray and see if, um, if at least it'll, make contact a little bit. Anybody that's ever done a radio or television remote kind of understands that not everything works perfectly every time. Because I'm telling you that stuff that goes out on remotes really, really goes through heck. It, uh, Those look good. It gets kind of abused quite a bit. All right. Well, that's close enough to together for right now. Let us plug you in, get you out of the way. And turn it on. That would help. Oh, well, it came on. And it's booting. That first little bit's kind of dis disconcerting unless you've seen it before. It just looks like the whole screen went bleh. But it is booting and it does take a minute. I don't want to stop it or play with it or mess with it at all. until it's actually up there. All right, now it's on. Well, it appears to be rather solid. Still wiggly, though. Uh, I'm going to tell him no. Yes. That was interesting. The battery symbols. Oh, that's because I don't have one in it, dummy. Well, it definitely means the power supply is working. <laughs> um, yeah. I forget what I was going to say. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to cut these things off in the middle of a boot. I don't think, if you can help it. Basically, it's a computer, and yes, it runs on Linux. I believe it's Linux. I do not believe it's Microsoft embedded. I believe it's Linux. At least it looks like it when it's booting. And once in a while, you can see I can see it do that. All right, so the battery is charging. And moving this around doesn't seem to matter. Well... Okay, let's, uh, let's 
See if it'll even try. Ugh. To connect. Probably. It'll try. Probably say busy. Because it is. Let's see. Remotes. Configure. Network, manage networks, build in Etherport adapter. And there is, it is on DHCP. So, so that's on that, that's on 10. And the default DHCP type. Okay. All right. Well, Let's see the loop back. It should work. It does. Stays connected. I don't think this works. I think it's going to come up and say busy. No, nope. there it is. You can see that movement down there. So we are connected to the, uh, the loop back coming back to us. And if I can find my little thingy here, I might be able to get some audio out of it. Um. But on a secret marriage. We can accomplish them by getting married in Independence, the county seat. Then a 20 minute drive. There we go. Street. That's, so uh, the lunch hour break. that's coming from the 20 minutes each way would leave us 20 minutes to get the license and get hitched by the wow, county. Wow, that's chair. loud. By the time we got to a public place in front of the Jackson County Court building, there we go. We um, that's my speaker. It's truly bad. All right. So we are connected through, uh, Comrex has got a thing that you can call up through what I just did. And this is just on all the time. So you can check your levels and how, how it's coming back to you. But this is, this is, uh, the, uh, return. What we were hearing was the return. You turn that up to, for you to listen to what's coming back to you. And then you have the output, the local output, which would be your microphone. And that would be what's going out of here. And um, this is your mono in for, for your mono line input or mono input over here. Um, and so you can listen to them, give you cues, whatever, coming back like this is. So that works. Disconnect. Perfect. Well, it still works. It appears to be holding... Uh, it's got some soft spots on it. I just, that was, I do not like these new cans at all. They should have just stayed with what they had because these are terrible. Um, I, I really don't like them. We'll put a little bit in here. And give it a little pluggy poo. Um, I think that's as good as it's going to get for now. I'm going to tell the guy, look, I'm going to order one. And um, I'll deal with it when you don't need it for a day or two. Anyhow. Well, there we go. Comrex access. Not a fix, but you uh, you got to see what they're like or what they are. They're a pretty neat little device. They work really, really well. That battery is just about dead. So, anyhow. Hey, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you know when I'm doing something else. Till next time.